Um, Hi, Kessler. And I'll also. Bob Jeffett. I also can live broadcast on messages on Facebook. All right, mate. <laughs> okay, you're adorable. Love you. Bye. Okay. Let me mute you guys and uh, only one person speak when, when we talk. Maybe that's easier. So you can unmute yourself when you um, have a question. Okay. Um, so I, how many of you have not signed up for tomorrow's class? Just curiously, no? So you all signed up already, right? Yeah, because they have a link for this meeting um, as a training session for someone who never done Zoom class before. If they have any, you know, doubt, um, they can try it first. <laughs> it's a, it's a, not a formal uh, workshop. We don't have a agenda. I, I just uh, want to answer questions and give you some. Uh, uh, we just try out the uh, functionality of the Zoom. So tomorrow we'll have a smooth start. At least, you know, instead of spending 10 minutes to figure out how to mute everybody, how to unmute everybody. So you can try to unmute yourself uh, and then mute again. So this is how you, you yeah, you, you, if you want to, you can, okay. So you know where to mute and unmute, right? Perfect. Yep. Very good. I, it was a very good idea for you to do this so that everybody could um, learn how to do the Zoom classes. Yeah. So tomorrow when I start a uh, demo, I will mute everybody uh, because some sometimes when people um, have difficulty to unmute themselves, the the picture will pop up. I mean, wh whoever sp speaks. The picture will pop up. So you need to learn how to ping my video. You know the ping video function? Nobody, uh, anybody didn't know that? Okay, to ping my video on computer, you go to the gallery view. If you see a speaker view, you are already in gallery view. Uh, it's somewhere on the top, indicates the current mode. So um, I'm in gallery view, so I see speaker view. If I click on speaker view, I will go to speaker view, which uh, you should do, you know, try, try speaker view so you don't see anybody but me. My table, my, my table is, uh, let me show my face, so that's easier. I, I made, um, I will have a multi-camera uh, uh, program tomorrow, but today I try to just use one. Uh, so you can see my face, right? Uh, you can see <laughs> Henry Lee, and then you can ping my video. Uh, if you use the iPad, iPad, you need to double click uh, in the gallery view mode, so it will be fixed. Uh, on computer or other other uh, device, there's a um, there's like three dots for more functions. If you point your mouse. Uh, to the small window of my video and you will see some options like a ping video is one of that. If you ping my video, it will become, it will enlarge it. And so when people ask questions, comment, or they, you know, the dark sparking or something, you will not be interrupted. Okay, so I'll ping my video right now myself. But I want to see your reaction. So um, that's about it. I do have some nonverbal communication tools, but nobody has really taken advantage of that. Let's do this. If I ask a question, uh, am I too slow or too fast? You can click on, uh, if you click on participants, you can see a row of icons go faster, go, go slower or yes or no, let me try this. Let me give you a yes or no question, and then you give me, uh, you click on yes or no. Do you see the green check mark for yes and the red X for no on the, on the participants window? If you click on participants, 
they should pop out on your device size. I don't know if uh, different devices may be different. Okay, um, let me mute all again. So my question for you is, have you, um, have you, have you purchased the book, <laughs> the ebook, the e book? If you if you did, have you downloaded it? Uh, if you haven't, don't worry about this. You can do it uh, anytime before or after the class. I will send you the link, um, and we'll go through this book briefly. Uh, but let me let me copy the link here. You can download it just so you don't have to wait me to ship to you. It's an ebook. Um, e ebook. Okay, I just share the windows with you so you can see my website. Okay. Um, okay, it, this is the, the home page uh, of the website, the categories. Um, so on the books section, oh, you can do a quick find. If you just browse by categories under uh, books and DVDs, and then you go to books. Although we, 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 we only have download version of books. And then let me just find it. So these are, okay, this one here. It's called a flower and the plant painting album by Li Ye Wu. Okay, and this is the cover. And I have a, a thumbnail of all the pages um, in this book. We'll go through that a bit. Um, a brief introduction of the author. Uh, he lived uh, in the turn of century in uh, 19th to 20th century. Let me mute everybody again. Uh, I don't know how to mute it in, in this mode. So mute yourself when you just joined, okay. Um, and he's, uh, he's a second generation master uh, under the first generation master, Ju Lian, Ju Cao. Ju Cao. Um, we call them, them two Gs. This is pronunciation is kind of hard. G, 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 uh, G is the G brothers, I think. The, the two G brothers are the first generation of a Cantonese um, school, also known as Lingnan school. Lingnan is the um, Southern China, uh, referring mainly to the, the Canton area and there's uh, maybe neighboring state uh, province as well, like a Guangxi maybe. I'm not sure how Lingnan is, uh, but uh, it's the Nan, it means uh, the south of some mountain range, you know, it's a uh, Lingnan school master. And he, um, he died very young, unfortunately, at the age of uh, 39. So in, from 1899 to 1938 um, of uh, diabetes and some uh, other horse of uh, you know, just he, he's a very weak person. I, I have a picture I'll show you. Uh, so his painting is very rare. Um, but I, I, uh, I saw, the first time I saw his book in 1983, uh, I got a copy and since then I have been uh, studying his, his style, falling in love with his style for almost uh, 35 years or something or more, yeah, more than 35 years. Other than my own teacher, uh, Zhang Zhenying, the teacher Zhang, he's my favorite uh, flower and birds flower and the insects, actually. He, 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 uh, I only had, had, had I only had, um, I had never saw his birds, only insects and, and uh, plants. Um, so you, you can purchase this book uh, for $8, so you got all the pages. For this class, I would, I would select uh, maybe uh, two or three for tomorrow's uh, workshop. 
and well, I'll do that too with you guys. You have the advantage of picking what's to paint today before, for tomorrow, okay? Uh, so let's do this book. Return to my table now. So you can see this book. <coughs> uh, here's a picture of uh, the author. Um, actually, this is a this is the book. His wife. This book is painted for his uh, wife um, as a teaching samples. Um, I I have copied this on various uh, surfaces, like I did this one on a silk fan. Um, I still have it, and I painted lots of uh, them. Every one of every page of them uh, on on postcards, on greeting cards. Uh, I had a special uh, booth in, in a top street fair in, in Bellevue, Seattle. Uh, it's very hard to get in, but they, they accepted me. Uh, our original hand painted the cards based on this book. The poppies, the, the jasmine. Um, some flowers I don't know the name. Uh, it's a tree blossom. But I do have a translation of each blossom, the best I can, uh, to my knowledge, with the ebook. So the ebook is a, has a like an index page. You'll see all the titles of the translation of the, the flowers. So I, uh, yeah, I cannot really tell each one because some very hard to identify. This is, uh, this is a chrysanthemum. Speaking of chrysanthemum, I have an original painting. Some of you may have seen the YouTube when I unboxed that one. I bought from the uh, auction house um, a few, two years ago, I think. Um, I was so lucky to, to, to uh, win that uh, auction. Uh, because it is unknown, nobody actually competed with me. So I got at the bottom price, uh, bottom offer. Beautiful painting, I'll show you that tomorrow. And uh, this one is my intention to do tomorrow. This uh, summer, uh, we call it summer magnolia or southern magnolia. Let me see everybody's reaction. Um, Yes. Uh, okay. The reason I picked this one is the uh, the typical uh, technique with the uh, turned over leaves. That's a that's a style uh, of this uh, Cantonese school, and uh, uh, this will still have the bone. We call it boneless, but uh, actually they're bone. The, their uh, lines, like you paint a white flower, you have, you, you got to outline it, right? Um, but the leaf has, yes, in, please, a question? In order to um, uh, download the book, you said you can go on Blue Heron and um, order it. What is yeah. the name of the book? Did you, uh, let me see, Did you, are you the person who just... Uh, you sent me a chat but then I can't seem to get it on my computer. I only got it okay. on my Okay, phone. oh, okay. So I, I missed, uh, I messed up. Uh, there's a, a lady called, talked to me earlier. She already bought it, so I sent a link to her. Did you order it already? No? No, I couldn't do it on my phone. I tried to do it on the computer. That's why I moved over to my computer. Okay, to let me send you this. Let me send a link to everybody so you can do it. Uh, I'll send you an email again, maybe later, but uh, let me okay. just send the link. If you want to do it now, you can do it now. Let me send, uh, uh, I forgot that. I, that's the reason I, thank you for reminding me. So this is the book we're talking about. Okay, do you see the, the link in the chat, chat room? Okay, everybody, you can find, you can open the chat room because we, when, um, when you are muted, you can still ask questions by typing in in the chat room. I got a question there. Is this same then uh, lineage now as the, oh yes, very good question. Chao Xiaoan, 
Chao Chao is the is it is he the second generation or third generation? Probably third. Right? He he's after Gao Qi Feng, Gao Qi Pei. Gao, the two gods are students of the uh, two Gs. And they are in the same generation as uh, this this person, Li Ye Wu. So Li is the same as the Chen Chen. Um, two gals and the ten. What's the name? What's the net name? I forgot. My my mind is in blank. Chen Shu Ren, Chen Shu Ren, Gao Qi Feng, Gao Qi Pei, Chen Shu Ren. They are the three masters of the second generation. Uh, are they in the Republic China? So, um, Zhao Xiao and his is he still alive? Probably not. Huh? Yeah. Um. He he's uh, the third generation. I think the living master is uh, Ou Hao Nian, right? He had a show last year, in, uh, this year, in, earlier this year, right, in San Francisco. So Lingnan School is very um, um, influential in contemporary, in contemporary uh, China and the world. Okay. Yeah, there are many masters. I don't even uh, know. I know Guan Xianye has died. Uh, he's the second generation of his uh, uh, landscape master. And and um, so anyway, um, so this this uh, style is very. Um, I think compared to other, like Zhao Chan's or, or um, yeah, Zhao Chan is very uh, Zhao. Uh, uh, I I like Zhao. I also have yeah, has, has his book. Um, so um, you know some colors uh, techniques are the same, but uh, because um, Li is very um, maybe you know his personality. You can see his pictures. It's kind of weak. Uh, I don't want to use the, the it's, it's weak. Uh, it's very um, less aggressive. How to describe it? You know, like uh, he's uh, he's uh, sitting here like that. So his painting is like a, this person is very delicate, very subtle, um, but we're you know still very strong in in bone stroke. I think I did this painting. Many many times, study. Just uh, I tried to do this one because this is very seasonal. It's called the creep myrtle. Am I correct? Creep uh, creep creep myrtle. Beautiful. Uh, thank you. So this is this is my <laughs> latest uh, copy. Uh, you can see I tried to on uh, semi sized shrine. Uh, it's absorbent. I think I started this test uh, last uh, class uh, in my landscape class. I started this leaf, so this is too big, but I made it into a painting anyway. So this is the um, you can see the blurry, blurry of, of the colors. I use the watercolor, so it tends to separate from the uh, Chinese color. Um, I use the green with the uh, Chinese. Um, rose. This one is on um, the sized paper. Let me ask you a yes or no question. How do I clean this uh, result? Maybe uh, do you have sized paper ready? Oh, I can see. Okay, great. I can see that. Uh, I can see the check mark three of you. So if you don't have uh, the uh, if you don't have the sized paper, you can use semi-size. It still works, you know. But uh, uh, I tr I had a lot of problems to create this kind of effect. We call this uh, Tarashikomi in Japanese, and uh, what we call in Cantonese Huang uh, 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 white into wet, or water into Water into wet, zhang shui, drop, uh, dri dripping. We call zhang dripping 
into it. Um, I did even with this the semi sized paper with the, uh, this is this is a different painting I'll show you later the original, but this is the, the semi sized the thick paper. I also tried this. Uh, it's probably a little uh, absorbent, but you can still work. You can even use the unsized paper, no problem. Uh, I mean, yeah, this is the same as size, the thick, same as size, thick paper with the orchid. I used the uh, ink cake, which tends to bleed less on this kind of paper. You can, uh, it, the, the ink holds at least, you know, the color may bleed if you have a brand. Um, so this, this paper works well with this ink cake. Uh, semi sized semi sized paper and uh, okay I also used uh, sized paper um, for zombie like uh, this is a uh, Chicada wing paper Chicada wing is very thin you can see it's translucent I can see through that right like, yeah this is painted uh, uh, with the live orchid um, we have an orchid uh, blooming like this uh, tomorrow, so Victoria is going to use that model as model for her calligraphy class. They'll try to write the the character for orchids and also paint the uh, calligraphic uh, orchids painting. Uh, I I tend to paint orchid also. Um, but you know, this is more like a, this is a Liu. Okay, I copied from this book. Let me show you the original. So this, I will send you this one for Crepe Myrtle, and I will do the Magnolia. So we have one more. <laughs> this is a um, iris. It's a, I'm looking at uh, something similar. I don't know what this is. This one is a uh, uh, pomegranate. Flower, just to, uh, yeah. So since we did uh, magnolia, I won't do jasmine. I I have jasmine in our garden. You know, we, we could use jasmine while we do magnolia. Maybe you know, prepare white flowers. You can paint either one of those. Maybe. Um. So let's see. Okay, here we see the original. So this is my copy. So you need to cut the paper into uh, one one twelfth of the four sheet, or one one uh, fourth of the, the medium sheet, or uh, it's about uh, thirteen and a half or fourteen by nine or something like that. Nine and a half. Okay. So if you if you have you know normally the the size is like. Uh, like this is the uh, yeah, this is like the medium size, uh, half of the medium size. So it's a uh, one fourth of the medium size. Yeah. So you know you know how to cut that. Yeah. So it's a little bit wider than the original, but uh, it should work. So uh, this won't take too long, but uh, it's good to practice some. Uh, to warm up, like an orchid is always good. So I'm going to send maybe one orchid. Uh, I also have this orchid. We have the turned leaves. I think this is the this is the rose. And since we did, we all can only do one color flowers. This is for spring. This is the cherry blossom. Uh, this is the rose. Lilac, beautiful, huh? Well, yeah, I, if you like, we can continue the class um, on a weekly basis. So this one, uh, I love it. This one is also in the advertisement in the newsletter. I think I did it on the golden paper. Um, yeah, th this one is, uh, it's kind of orchid. I don't know what exactly. I did this one on semi-sized, semi-sized paper. Okay, you can also use uh, uh, more paper. Let me see. This is more paper. 
with the Magnolia. Okay. Mulberry paper. Um, yeah, it tends, you know, it, it, as long as not to smear too much, you want, you want to use that. Okay. There are two more. Um, this is just regular sized paper for Gombi, you know, that, that has a shimmering surface. I don't know if you can see it. I did this one with the light flowers. We still have this uh, dendrogen, uh, dend dendrogen, uh, this, uh, this flower. And this is a uh, Kalia, it's gone already. Last, I did last week, I think, the last days. Um, I, I washed the background with the, uh, this is the, uh, just Gombi paper, the for fine line style. This one is also the same kind of paper for uh, Gombi, the shimmering, it's like, we call it mica, sides paper with mica. So this is a uh, jasmine, uh, jasmine flower. Okay, and I, I tried to make the, the color, uh, the background color with uh, just, you know, washes of the uh, uh, red, red, yellow, and the blue, rainbow. So if you prefer any subject matter with, uh, we see it in here, you can uh, type in in the chat, chat room. Okay. Um, so I haven't decided what exactly we'll do. So basically I, I will do some, uh, this one, uh, maybe this one and the, the quick matter. So this is my ambition. I, I don't know if we can, we have enough time. We will have three hours. If we don't have time, we have to squeeze out to the critique to after class. Maybe I can do that uh, with online class. If you, um, yeah, we also have an online class where we uh, we interact on a daily basis. So you can submit your homework after it, after the, the live class for critique. Um, yeah, two peonies. This and this, what's the difference? Can you tell? Anybody? Two peonies. Why there are two peonies here? Can you, if any answer, just unmute yourself. One the tree peony and one the flower peony. Yes, very good answer. This is a tree peony. You can see the wood, wooden uh, stem, woody stem. And uh, this is uh, the grass peony, herbal peony. Is that right? The, the name for it. Uh, in Chinese, mudan and shaoyao. It's just different plants, but the, the flower looks similar. We, we, in English, they are both called peonies. Right? Okay. I have three peonies in my front yard, but the, the heat just burned all the leaves. Got wizard uh, already. Uh, I don't know if it, he, she will survive the heat. I had a flower in, in, the, in the early spring, just like this. Yes, <laughs> you can't believe it. It, uh, it bloomed like this, just very few leaves because the weather, is, like the climate here is not suitable for the peony, I think. Yeah, they, they only have some very small leaves and just, uh, just this many and the big flowers. You, you can check my YouTube find out my peony <laughs> in LA. Yeah. I don't know how did they have it in Huntington Library, Chinese Garden, they got it. Um, wisteria. So usually when I do flowers, I try to do it uh, according to the season. So if, you know, if this is spring, I'll do spring tree blossoms. If, or uh, late spring, I'll do wisteria. Um, this technique, you can see it's uh, um, 
it's the uh, the white dripping technique. So in, in this painting style, we we don't blend the color on the brush. You if you paint with unsized paper, you have to do that. So you can you can uh, you can blend the color, mix the color on the brush. I don't I don't use the word uh, blend or mix. Let's say break break two colors on the brush. Um, so you do it in one stroke on unsized paper. The reason we use I mean the reason we use this technique on this is we try to create the gradation with two brushes with two brushes yeah i sh should not start talking too much <laughs> tomorrow i have to repeat this <laughs> bear with me <laughs> it's here twice <laughs> so let's say we use one brush for um the color here is the uh, purplish uh, pink um, and then we have second brush with the uh, white, white. So you do the pink, then white. If you have two brushes, try this. I've been practicing this all night yesterday. <laughs> See, shifting the brush in one hand. Otherwise you have to do this, you do this, and then you put that down and come back. You will waste time because the weather here is so dry. Um, I, I realized that, you know, when I try to, yeah, this, you know, when I try to finish all the pink and then I drop um, white, it, it dries already. So I have to do quickly on each petal. You know, I just did this morning before, <laughs> before this meeting, see uh, something, something worked here. That's what, how I did it with two brush in one hand. So I did uh, the purple and then I, I dropped the, the white right away. So you can see that kind of uh, uh, or dripping or zhuang fen in Chinese. Zhuang uh, means a dripping, dripping uh, gouache, fen means gouache. Uh, speaking of white, what what kind of white uh, should we use? Uh, you, of course, you can use uh, Ch Chinese white uh, in uh, Maris, uh, the titanium white, titanium white in gouache or what color? Uh, also, you can use uh, um, we have some kind of bottled white ink, uh, and in my watercolor class. A lady mentioned uh, he like to use uh, gesso. Any comments on that? Gesso is, uh, is white. I have gesso for priming um, my canvas. You can dilute it with water, right? Gesso will work. Yeah, whatever <laughs> works. In the past, they used the mica, mica white, right? The, the, the seashell white. Uh, you have to add uh, gelatin to it, I think. Um, yeah, Daisy, you mentioned, uh, you asked if uh, I recommend you review the lesson uh, with Professor Rao. I think you can find it on YouTube, yeah, the two brush technique. Um, basically, it's, it's hold like a, like a chopsticks and uh, you put one between the index finger and the, uh, the uh, let me put this uh, book away so you can see my hand clearly. Can you, can you see it? Okay, so uh, this is the one which is not being used. And then you, you hold the brush regularly like this. So just insert a brush in between your your index finger and the middle finger, just like like this. There are two ways to, to do it. One is to uh, first of all you you move you you kind of 
this to the ring finger and the small finger. Oh no, sorry, the ring finger and the middle finger uh, hold the the one is using right. Then um, you you lose the the let's say brush A and brush B. So when the brush A is down, you lose it by uh, take the thumb away, and then the brush will be horizontal, right? And then you move this down. Okay, when I do it in slow motion, it's not right. Okay, you have to, so the middle finger actually is, um, have to have to change. Yes, in in the in the middle of this exchange, you you the middle finger grab kind of a, take the let me do it this way maybe it's clear. So yeah, see the middle finger actually moves the first one up and then. This is how it, it works. And you can also do it from, uh, from this. So there are two ways. See this, uh, the brush B comes from outside, from uh, right to left. And then brush A comes behind. So I always, this is, a, how many of you know this trick? The Japanese also learned this when they are uh, at the age of practice uh, uh, chopsticks, I think. But that not every Chinese do, can do this. Uh, besides the artists, I have student. I have a student uh, named uh, Terry. Is Terry here now? Uh, she does better than me because she always paint gombi. Uh, she's a gombi artist. So he he. She just devoted herself to gombi. So after you practice. You don't have to practice. Just uh, you can do slow. You know, uh, after a while, it become automatic. You don't even think about it. You know, you just think what you need to hear, and you just do. You just hear this clipping sound. Yeah, something like that. I think yeah, you can just keep it one direction. I think it's maybe easier. You you just hold the brush like this, so you will not drop. At least, you know, like when you do the shift, yeah, to practice. And when you're familiar, you can do it vertically without dropping the brush. You can see clipping. Um, don't worry if you, you know, just use your both hands. It's, it's, you just do this. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. So. This is something you can start to practice. <laughs> anyway, so I I talked about uh, paper. You you if you want to exact to have this hard edge, hard edge um, effect uh, on um, the flowers. Sometimes it's not good, but sometimes you need it. Um, you have to use the size the paper. And you can use uh, the regular sized or size paper without a mica. That's what I use. We have uh, three sizes. The large one and the medium uh, are about the same. The smaller one, we, uh, it's, a, it's a little different, uh, a little warmer than this, I think. Anyway, but you can use any of those um, to be fine. You can also use uh, whatever paper, you know. Semi-sized, uh, unsized paper. I didn't try it, but unsized paper. Uh, you have to blend. You have to load the white and then the uh, pink in the front, and then you just do it in one stroke, just like a regular uh, freestyle painting. Uh, you know, like uh, yeah, just like uh, you probably have learned from uh, other classes. Okay, so. Let me unmute yourself so you can, you can ask more questions. Allow participants unmute. Okay. 
Um, any question about the the reference book? Please send email participants as possible as soon as possible so you can prepare the class. Um, okay, so what preparation? I, I already specified the recommended paper, the brushes, and you know, you, don't, you can use any brush, but uh, you better have uh, a liner. Um, I, you know, I, I I tend to use a uh, a uh, liner which is more versatile than the uh, Gombi liner. You know, the Gombi liner or uh, a small liner like this uh, could be good for the uh, veins on the leaves. But you can use this kind of uh, liner. The, I call it. Uh, uh, we just got this thing. I haven't missed it online, but we have a first edition there called the uh, mix. Let me see what this is called the Ren Ren Bonian um, soft and stiff mix brush. Let me send you a link. This is a a good brush for this. Brushes. Oh, by the way, we we just. I'll just show you how to find it online. So I would recommend a brush for this. It's named after the Shanghai master, Ren Bo Nian, the Qing master, very, very good uh, artist. And he used the brush, which is the, uh, has the soft hair in the middle and the, uh, um, the Stiff hair on the outside, some soft hair in the middle. So it's a, uh, it's a soft, stiff combination brush. Uh, stiff hair brush, combination brush. It should be under combination brush. The combination brush, we have this. Uh, this is also good the, the uh, uh, seven wolf and the three sheep. And you can use the stiff and the soft combination brush with the thicker cord, uh, our best seller brush. For five nine nine, this one is good for leaves, for petals, something like that. And uh, yeah, Ren Bo Nian, R E N. This one I just clicking. This is the brush I suggest. We we don't have many in this edition um, in stock, but we just got. Second edition, they're slightly different, a little longer than this, and a little leaner. So let me show you this one. Yeah, you see a little, a little uh, soft hair inside, and then the uh, stiff hair around it. This is another picture of the open brush. It is a mixture brush. It's a very Flexible brush to do the leaves and veins and uh, this outline you know, that kind of thing. Rambonian brush is different than the moss brush. So it's a softer and it's a liner. The dot, yeah, the 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 moss brush. Let me show you this one. It's it's also good. I um. I found it useful to do the um, pedals, actually, to dot the pedals. Let me show you. You can use it for color, or use it if you have more, you know, one for, one for white, one for color. Um, let's see. Yeah, for this kind of dot, you know, the, the little pet, uh, buds, things like that. Oh, I don't have the color here. Okay, we'll just do a quick test of this brush. 
compared to the I, I put the Maris color in a in a obviously in a plastic keep it from dry too fast and still they will dry. So you can open the tube. But for this class I I I, I prefer fresh squeeze. <laughs> if it's this, you can still be squeezed out. Fresh squeeze. Um, otherwise, it's not so easy to move. Let's get some uh, glue. I got this. Uh, I I think it's ultramarine. In Chinese, it's Qingqing. Ultramarine. Okay. And I use this. This gouache, it's actually um, acrylic gouache, gouache acrylic uh, from um, Hoban. Oh, no, acrylic. Yeah, it, this I think it's Hoban. It's Japanese, Japanese. Uh, it's called titanium, titanium white uh, gouache, acrylic, acrylia. What is it? Not acrylic. Acrylia gouache. Acrylic, uh, acrylic, acrylic gouache. Yeah, this uh, would not give you, uh, you know, the some gouache is is like matte finish when it's dry. So at some angle, you see uh, some kind of gray. But this one is more uh, glossy, I think maybe, maybe. But I I just um, like the the. the uh, Texture is very fine, you know. I don't have any. Uh, okay. I, I, when I use gouache, I just use brush tip to, to get it. And then I dilute it with water. Oops, I got too many. I better do a painting. <coughs> So you hold the brush like this. So let's just do, I'm not sure if it's clean. This brush is landscape brush. It's got ink in it. But it, you know, it's good to have some ink that kind of mute it. So you, you make a, some, some purple, and then make uh, some kind of uh, uh, cream, cream milk, cream milk, right? This is yogurt, make it into a cream milk. And this brush is relatively, relatively um, full of the uh, um, paint. Then this one you don't have to. Uh, you will see why. Because uh, this this one is to create the shape. If it's too wet, it you won't be easy to to draw the the shape. So <clears throat> let's say I hold the brush like this. Right? So quick mercury for um. I mean, six petals, but we don't really count them. You can just make a, it, it, it looks like this, like a wind wheel. You know? It's very different than any flower. It's almost like a, um, you know, anyway, if, if you see in distance, they don't really, you cannot really tell this individual ones. <clears throat> Then then you just uh, um, start to charge it with some dark. <coughs> Excuse me. And then uh, see, yeah, that that's the effect. Zoom in. Well, is that clear? I think this will work. I never tried this uh, message. I changed the camera completely, not instead of 
showing my face on the corners. I think this is more give me more high definition. See that beautiful Tarashikomi? So this uh, white, white on the outer part of the petal, kind of running into the dark underneath it, create this kind of uh, uh, effect. Um, the point is, you know, you you don't you don't paint with the second brush. You just charge it. You just charge it. You can you, you can dot. You cannot draw. You draw with this one, so you can draw with this one. You, you, it gives you shape, shape of the, the stroke. Um, sometimes you may need a third one. I don't have any room for the third. So you you kind of created um, I'm sorry, the wrong brush. So charge it. Because the, the the white has no white brush has no no color, right? So you need to um, give a little uh, lighter color. So this could be graded. Uh, I think yeah, you can you can have a gradation. So let's say you can have a gradation. I don't know what flower is this. I just experiment with color. So this, see if this brush is too dry, you won't, uh, you won't deliver. So you need to make more milk. You can, I will make like a four, um, a small plate with the milk. So you can have a saucer with, with white uh, separated from the color. So you can always have your milk supply in hand. So prepare with the, uh, several of this kind of dish for help. Um, I'll, I'll send a reminder because uh, you know um, this might be a necessary. Uh, yeah, I think several dishes for different colors. So I didn't outline it, but in the end, you'll see uh, a very, uh, we call it the seam line around the stand or stand line, we call it. It created kind of like a, uh, almost like a, a natural outline contour, like a, in, in Gombe, uh, you outline it first. You can outline it first, you know, if you, if you use semi-sized, you cannot create this line, this uh, this uh, seam line, this uh, stain line, and so you you, you what you do, you, you just outline, outline the the pillows, and you fake it, you kind of you, you you color it just like a gombi, but without ink, you can still create this kind of uh, effect. Um, and then you, you can use a, a clean brush to pull, just like a gombi, you know, you can, you can, you can create, create a um, gradation with a clean brush. So you, at the beginning, you can use this two brush, one clean and one color. So you, you draw something, whatever, and then you pour it into a shape with a clean brush. And then you, 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 you drop, you drop um, this uh, uh, white. That, that's how it works. So there are many ways. Uh, most important is you, you, uh, you have a desire to create something beautiful uh, and, uh, you know, so you, you will find your way eventually with some experiment. 
I uh, I think Gombi is a very loose um, style or technique, just like Xie Yi. Everybody has their own approach, and it 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 uh, most important is the material, the you know what it works. If it's suitable for outline, you do the outline Gombi or or uh, semi Xie Yi, semi Gombi. You know, uh, if it's suitable for creating this nat natural uh, natural outline or not, you have to find out the, uh, the paper, get familiar with the paper you're working on. I think that's the, you know, I, I have done same style with the acrylic on fiberglass. It has nothing to do with all this, but I can, I can still paint the, uh, in the style of, uh, of this. Did you see my elephant I, I did recently for um, a commission in March and April? Let me show you that. So let me find that. I can use it uh, on, on uh, canvas, on watercolor paper, on uh, fiberglass, on you know, anything. Uh, so the style not really has to do with any of these. It it's the the line, the the concept, the the shape, the line. How do you distort the actual um, yeah actual outcome flower to make it? Uh, I let me show you something. Um, yeah, I did. I did some study with uh, canvas. Let me show you this one. Maybe. I'll show you something else. Maybe I should show you this window. So. Okay. Let me share something with you. <clears throat> the, uh, this is a watercolor. I used the gesso. Um, yeah, it's gesso on um, paper, on um, oil painting canvas paper, kind of textured. Yeah, but I used the watercolor on it. Uh, just the experiment for a color study for. Uh, the commission of doing this finally on on the uh, fiberglass sculpture. So this is a uh, um, this is some flower in our garden. Okay. Whoops. Okay. Let me share the whole folder so you can find that. <coughs> um, yeah. This is the. Okay, let's see. Yeah, this is the finished work. Um, let's see where I can start from the last day. I, I, I took some pictures from, let me see. Let's start from here. Okay, this, this is a, Giant elephant. There are some small ones, just uh, 10 inches tall, maybe 15 inches tall. So this one is almost uh, uh, five feet tall. And I use the same style. Um, same style as Leo inspired. So the birds. Okay. It's bonus style painting. Uh, yeah, you can see the. Um, from distance, you know, it's almost like uh, brush painting, right? Because the the, the elegancy of these lines, um, this uh, tree trunk, that's, that makes the most difference. So this boneless painting actually has bone, right? The, 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 uh, uh, just the sparsity of the branches. Yeah, that's make make the poetry of it. Yeah, that's the style. See this, just this, this. So you have you, you can pra well to practice this the bone stroke. Yeah. Oops. 
Henry, we don't have your screen. Oh, you don't? Okay. Have the small images. Oh, okay. Sorry, the small. Oh, I see what you mean. I think if we pop up, I have to change that. Okay, this one, right? Can you see it? Okay, let's do this again. Um, yeah, these are the <coughs> very um, loose <laughs> because he he want the client clients wanted to the um, falling pedals. It's beautiful. Thank you. So if you learned this style, you can do this uh, on any it was any media. It's just a concept. Um, I combined uh, my daughter designed this uh, eight years ago. Is the the, the 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 eyes are yeah. We did the hummingbirds this time. Uh, see the little ones on the on the left are prototypes design. Um, I have to got approval from the kinds with those, and then I I did the large one. It was a very smooth um, process, but it's very long, so like three months. Uh, we did uh, we did the, uh, like a canvas uh, on paper also, yeah. But we start from paper design, then the canvas for color, and then uh, find out the the background colors and other things. And my study with watercolor really helps to get this uh, done. The three colors on background, red, yellow, and green. Yeah. So everything will come together. You can see my living room here. <laughs> the, yeah, the flowers on the back, you know, the, the plum blossom and the peach blossom, all have, has to do with this technique. Bonus style technique. Okay, if anybody wants to leave, I will see you tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, we, we got the one hour already. So, I, I will send you a reminder. Everybody, see you tomorrow. Mr. Lee, before we leave, we're going to do Magnolia, Crepe Myrtle, and what's the third? Or, or just those two? Uh, orchid. Orchid. Very good. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you sir. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye, everybody. See you.